So that is tip number, th so that is three, and welcome to my channel. I'm Nikki and today's video I'm going to be talking about five things that I wish I knew before I started my weight loss journey. If you enjoyed this video or find it helpful please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it and let's jump right in. My whole life I've struggled with my weight and in 2020 it was the first time that I ever had success with weight loss. I started my weight loss journey in April and I lost 70 pounds in a year and I've continued to maintain that loss now since then. So today I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I wish I knew before I lost 70 pounds and before I started my weight loss journey. The majority of my weight loss took a year, like I had mentioned, I lost 70 pounds in a year and then I maintained it for a couple years after. I've recently switched back to weight loss mode just with my tracking, just to kind of tone up a little bit more and see some of the muscle that I've built because that's been my main focus over the years. But I thought it could be helpful to talk about some of the things that I wish I knew before I started my weight loss and like the peak of my weight loss journey because these are things that I've just learned throughout the months and the years of doing this this and just some of the things that have helped me to kind of make a switch and just see success with weight loss and maintaining that weight loss. So anyway, let's go ahead and start with number one. The first thing that I wish I knew before I started my weight loss journey was that holidays and events don't really have to change and they can. You can do things however you want to. You can do what works best for you. But for me in the past, personally, I always thought that I had to be very restrictive when it came to holidays and events and just indulging it all. I thought it was just not possible. I didn't know you could have balance and still have success with losing weight and just overall maintaining a healthy body weight and just like healthy body in general. For so long, I thought that to be in shape, you just had to restrict everything, like I said. And that included events, going out, drinking or having snacks and appetizers, going to holidays and family parties, everything like that, where there's lots of indulgent foods and desserts. I thought that I wasn't going to be able to enjoy them anymore if I started losing weight because I didn't realize how important it is to actually have balance and to enjoy those things in moderation. So even in the beginning of my weight loss journey, I was tracking with Weight Watchers. If you guys don't know, I used Weight Watchers throughout my weight loss journey and that's what I still use to track, but that's what I use to lose weight because for me, it just worked best with the point system. Again, it's important to find what works best for you. So if tracking calories works better or there's something else that works better for you, do that. But Weight Watchers worked for me. So I was tracking points and I would save up my weeklies for events, but still in the beginning was pretty nervous to use them. I was kind of more restrictive when I had first started my weight loss and I was losing weight. And I realized that even on the holidays, like I would still have fluctuations on the scale. Maybe I still wouldn't have a loss, even if I didn't fully enjoy myself. And I started to realize that it was fine. I wasn't gonna lose all my results overnight. So enjoying a day or two of some indulgent things was fine. So I started to kind of balance out my weeklies more and realize that I could use them because I was kind of just like banking them up in the beginning and not using them. And when I realized that I could use them, I could have balance and enjoy these things, it made events much better. It made holidays better. And now it's taken a lot of that like stress and food noise that I used to have because I've come up with some habits that help me. So I like to make sure I have a filling meal before I go to a family party or an event because then I'm not as likely to like overeat on the indulgent stuff, but I can still enjoy it. It's kind of like how I have an apple after dinner before I have dessert. It kind of fills me up a little bit, but then I'm still able to enjoy what I want to and I don't feel restricted at all. So that's one thing, making sure to drink water, get sleep the night before, all those different healthy habits that kind of just make me feel better, allow me to also have balance and then enjoy those indulgent things when I go to like an event or something. So that's one thing that I wish I knew when I first started out and just all the time when I would like put off losing weight because I thought that I wasn't gonna be able to enjoy those things and I thought that I would stand out because of it and it just was something that was in my head that I realized that it's actually fine to have balance and it's important to and to enjoy those things and not miss out on them because you wanna lose weight and get healthier. Although that's still a priority and that's still something that's really important, you can get healthier while still enjoying things in moderation. The second thing that I wish I knew before I started my weight loss journey is that it doesn't matter what people think. And this is one of those things that it's kind of easier said than done and it's something that from time to time I definitely still struggle with but for so long that was something that I avoided. I avoided even trying to lose weight or telling people about it or just trying to get healthier because 
I felt shame and embarrassment and I worried too much about what other people thought. Even if I was trying to better myself, I still thought they were gonna think negatively of me, which just didn't make sense. And like now I think back to it and I think like, why was I thinking that way? But in the moment, it was definitely hard for me. So realizing that it doesn't matter what people think. And this was something that as I started to lose weight, my confidence really increased. And the reason it increased wasn't because I felt better about how I looked. That was a small part of it. But instead, I was gaining this new confidence because I had never had success losing weight. And I couldn't believe I was actually doing it. Like I for so long thought that if I could just figure this out, like I felt like I could do everything else. And when it came to losing weight, I just could not have success. And so when I finally did start to see some results my confidence definitely improved because I was so proud of the fact that I was actually doing it and putting in the work and seeing the results that gave me a whole new confidence that I hadn't had before and it kind of helped to drown out those thoughts that I had about like negative people or if they had negative things to say or think about me it really didn't matter because what really did matter was that I was focusing on me I was focusing on my health and my future and the reason I was doing it is so that I could be a better person for other people as well so there's no harm in what I'm doing. I'm trying to better myself so that I can just live a better, healthier, longer life, but also so I can do that for the people I love and care about. So thinking about it that way kind of just helped me to think through like if anyone has any negative things to think about what I'm doing, it doesn't matter because that's their problem and not mine. And again, that's just when I was like nervous about people knowing that I wanted to get healthier. Like I said, I kind of felt some shame about it, but even just thinking about when I first started going to the gym and when I was worried about what people thought of me there and I slowly started to to realize like everyone's just paying attention to themselves and it doesn't matter because if they're gonna look at me and judge me for what I'm doing I'm here working hard bettering myself they have no right to and it's their problem not mine kind of switching my mindset to that having more confidence in the fact that I was like taking control of my life and doing the right things it did help me to kind of get rid of the thoughts I had about like people thinking about what I was doing. So it doesn't matter what other people think and you need to just do what's best for you. Even that, like if there was something that while I was sharing my journey online or something that I shared that worked for me and other people didn't agree with it. First of all, I've learned that you can't make everyone happy, but also it doesn't matter what people think because they're gonna judge the way I judge things too, but you just have to kind of like think through it and realize that you're not doing anything wrong, you're bettering yourself and there's no need to get caught up on what other people think. I know it's a tough one and I know it's like very, much a mindset shift you have to make, but it definitely is something I wish I knew before I started my weight loss journey, before I cared about any of that. And I wish I would have just jumped in and started because of it. And even at the beginning, I wish I would have just had more confidence. But like I said, it slowly started to improve as I got healthier and took more control of my life. So that's another thing I wish I knew. Then the third thing I wish I knew before I lost 70 pounds is that plateaus and burnout are completely normal. That's why it's important to keep things interesting and to create habits that you actually enjoy that are sustainable. Even the things I enjoy, I get burnt out of at times. So I am so grateful to be able to rollerblade. I love it. That's what I started doing. Three months into my weight loss journey, I only focused on tracking my food. And then after three months, I started to incorporate exercise. And that's when I started rollerblading. And it just became my favorite thing to do. I love it. I do stress a little bit because when it gets cold, I can't skate. So I like to take advantage of the time that I can when we have nice weather. But there are also times where I start to get kind of burnt out because I get to go a lot and I want to take advantage of being able to go. But I realized like, okay, I need to just take some rest. I'll be able to get back to it. And I recently even felt that this past summer, around September, I was really kind of starting to feel burnt out about rollerblading. And part of me like feels guilt because it feels like this is the only time I can do it. But also I just kind of switched things up a little and I started focusing more on walking. And that's when I made getting my steps in a priority. And I kind of just switched my movement to that for a little bit. And now I've been able to skate the past couple days and it has been so nice. I've missed it. It does stink that it's gonna get colder now and I won't be able to go as much but it'll just be nice when I have the nice days that I can go and it just makes me more grateful for it. So mixing it up and kind of keeping things interesting to avoid getting burnt out. Same thing with foods. I like to do that too. I kind of realize that I start to eat the same things and maybe get sick of them. And then because of it, I don't really want to have them. So keeping things interesting. That's why we always do our snack reviews and stuff, trying to find new snacks and foods we can incorporate and also just like trying new recipes and stuff. Doing that can help to avoid burnout. It can also help when you hit a plateau, which like I said, is something I wish I knew was normal because I really did struggle when I hit my plateau weight that I was at for almost a year, honestly. I pretty much stayed there for months and it was weird because I was so used to weighing in every week and seeing a loss or just like 
focusing on the weight loss. There were times when I'd see a gain or when it would stay the same, but it was just like that pattern of weight loss mode that when I kept doing the right things and then the scale was just staying the same, I was getting really discouraged because I was like, what's going on? This is different than what I was used to. Even if I wasn't seeing a gain, I wasn't seeing a loss. It was just staying the same. So it was kind of discouraging to me and I had to realize that there are some things that I could do to mix it up to kind of kickstart things again, whether it's switching up the foods I ate, the grocery stores I shopped at to get different ingredients and the workouts I was doing. That's when I started to focus more on building muscle. And I kind of stepped away from the scale and didn't focus as much on that because I wanted to just get stronger and improve all of those aspects of my life. So that's when I started to make that my focus. And again, didn't focus too much on the fact that I hit the plateau because that is something that can be discouraging, but it is very normal. And there are honestly so many different things. It really just depends on your journey, but there are so many different things you can do to either kick start it again or kind of just change things up. So those are some things that really helped me. And I wish I knew, I feel like I knew it was going to come. Like I knew I was going to hit my goal weight, even though I technically didn't, I was still 10 pounds away from my goal weight when I hit my plateau. So I think that's why it was really discouraging too, but I had to reevaluate and realize, okay, maybe the goal weight I set for myself wasn't a healthy weight. Still to this day, I haven't gotten close to it. So Maybe that was a little bit too low trying to pick my high school driver's license weight. That's what I did. So that is something that definitely helped me to kind of realize and to just mix things up to avoid that. Then the next thing that I wish I knew before I started my weight loss journey was that sugar-free and fat-free foods aren't always the best options. And I'm not knocking those because there's a time and place for them. And I definitely think they can be beneficial. But I, when I first started Weight Watchers, was on a frenzy to find the lowest point items of everything. And of course, all of the sugar-free and fat-free items were much lower in points or even zero points. And so at the time, a lot of people were promoting them. I feel like when we first started Weight Watchers, like a lot of those products were really big and it's kind of changed a little bit since then. Again, they are fine in moderation, but at the time when we first started out, I was only buying fat-free cheese and sugar-free, like every option that I could buy things sugar-free, which again, sugar-free ketchup doesn't bother me. I'm totally fine with that. It doesn't upset my stomach. But then I was buying some like sugar-free candies and they would destroy my stomach. It hurt so bad. I would just be on my bed crying in pain because my stomach hurt so bad and I didn't know what was going on. I realized it was the artificial sweeteners that were really messing up my stomach. I also realized that the fat-free cheese did that and I haven't had it since. I had a couple nights where I was just, like I said, on my bed, just like in so much pain. I couldn't get comfortable. And it was days that I had the fat-free cheese. So since then, I just haven't gotten it because I don't want to deal with that anymore. And I've just kind of realized that even if it's the lowest point option, sometimes it is too good to be true. And of course, some things work for some people and they don't work for others. So even like the skinny syrup, sometimes they will cause people some really bad bloating, but I'm usually fine just putting a couple pumps in my coffee or a creamy, but certain things can affect other people differently. And I at first didn't realize that. I thought that those were just always the better options and that now that I was starting Weight Watchers and starting to lose weight, that was what I had to switch to. And I feel like since then, I've really gotten a lot of those products out of what I eat and focus more on like whole foods. Of course, I do have processed foods that I eat. People always comment that on like my grocery hauls and stuff. It's all about balance and moderation. I do eat a good amount of fruits and veggies and lots of protein. And I do have a lot of sources of whole foods and stuff that I eat. So that's why I like to share my days of eating and stuff too, to show that. But the snacks and the grocery hauls, sometimes it shows some things like that. And there are things that work for you and things that don't work for you. So you have to find what works best. But that was something I wish I knew before I started. I had to learn the hard way with some of those things that the sugar-free and fat-free options aren't always the better option. But again, not knocking it. There are some options that are good. It's just that it's not always the best for me at least. Okay, and then the last thing that I wish I knew before I started my weight loss journey is that weight loss is so, so, so much more about how I feel than how I look. And for so long, for my entire life, I always thought that my life would just be better if I could lose weight because if I was thinner, my life would be better. It had nothing to even do with my health. It had nothing to do with anything other than pretty much how other people saw me and how I looked. I thought that that was what mattered. That was never enough to get me motivated to actually lose weight and get healthier. And especially in like the peak of when I was gaining weight, like at my heaviest, I remember every time I would even think about that, like think about how I'd look, I'd be like, okay, I'm too far gone. I don't even care. And I would just eat and binge. And it was a really unhealthy cycle that I had and a really unhealthy thought process that I had. And this is something that I realized very, very early on, actually, when I started my weight loss journey this time around, because even a week in, 
I was feeling so much better. I had so much more energy and didn't feel as bloated, didn't feel just as like weighed down. And I was feeling so good after the first week tracking. I think that that really helped me to realize how much better I felt and started to realize like, okay, maybe weight loss is more about this than how I look. And of course I started to feel more confident and better about my body and how I looked. And that is like kind of a bonus that came along with it. But again, it wasn't enough to ever motivate me in the past. And still to this day, it's not enough to keep me going. What keeps me going is being able to move my body, being able to do fun activities outside, inside, run around with the dogs, play with my niece and nephew and keep up with them, carry them around. Like those things are what are important to me and why I prioritize my health over everything because that is what is able to keep me going. When I fuel my body, when I get enough sleep, when I move and stay active and take care of my bones and joints and muscles and get stronger, those are the things that are important. It doesn't matter how I look because as cliche as it sounds, what's important is what's on the inside. And I truly, truly believe that. So I finally realized that, that I could actually feel so much better by losing weight and that that was gonna keep me going. And to this day, that is what keeps me going when I make those decisions that are better for my health. Because I remember how I used to feel, the pain I used to feel, just how much more of a struggle every single day was for me when I didn't prioritize my health versus now. And it's just been so worth it. So that's something Thing that's really important and one thing that I wish I knew but again I learned really quickly at the start of this weight loss journey and I say this weight loss journey because I had tried to lose weight so many times in the past but this was the one that I finally had success out of every other time I didn't restrict I didn't do all of the things that I did in the past that made me miserable. I instead just took it a day at a time, focused on making it sustainable and enjoyable, and I was realistic with myself about it and doing it for the right reasons. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Those are just some of the things that have helped me and that I've learned along the way since losing 70 pounds and that I wish I knew before I started. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.